Each year, the hypercar class is set to expand its manufacturer entry list. Next year, in 2023, we'll see the addition of at least three or more teams joining, and hopefully that list will grow even bigger in years to come. Currently, in 2022, the hypercar class has four teams, Toyota, Peugeot, Glickenhaus, and Alpine? Alpine's hypercar entry is a very interesting topic, by reason of the car being in a class designated for hypercars. Because in fact, the entry is not even a hypercar. I'll explain more on that in a moment. Last year, Alpine announced that they would enter a LMDH prototype in the 2024 hypercar class. But isn't Alpine already racing in the hypercar class? So what exactly is going on here? While Alpine's 2022 entry is not a LMH or an LMDH, it's actually a grandfathered LMP1 car. Grandfathering an LMP1 car means that the regulations from the LMP1 category will continue into the next year of the WEC, even though it's no longer the LMP1 category, meaning Alpine were able to enter using the LMP1 regulations for the new hypercar class during the 2021 season. Before it was Alpine, the car was actually called the Rebellion R13. In the LMP1 class, Rebellion ran in the 2018 and 2019 seasons. They finished second in the WEC LMP1 championships and got a podium with a number one car at the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2020. Because the LMP1 category would switch to the hypercar category the following year, Rebellion would not return for the hypercar class. So it was announced that the LMP2 Alpine team would join the new WEC hypercar class in 2021, and they would rebrand the Rebellion R13, now called the Alpine A480. The hypercar class was meant for hypercars. However, because of the regulations continuing into 2021, Alpine got the chance to run a grandfathered LMP1 car. In the first year of the hypercar class, Alpine would race against Toyota and Glickenhaus. Alpine's 2021 season went good. They finished ahead of Glickenhaus, and even with Toyota obviously being quicker, Alpine would finish ahead of the number seven car at Spa and ahead of the number eight car at Monza, which meant two second places for the Alpine team. During the season, they finished on the podium in every race, and the number seven Toyota was the only other car to do so. Also, Alpine finished on the overall podium at their home race at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, which is a big goal for teams to finish on the podium at Le Mans. In 2022, the grandfathered LMP1 car was allowed to stay for one more year, and so that meant Alpine would use this LMP1 car once again in the hypercar class. Due to BOP adjustments for the race, Alpine dominated Sebring and won their first hypercar class victory, and a race later, they finished second in Spa. Coming out of the fourth round at Monza in 2022, Alpine were able to win another race, beating Toyota, Glickenhaus, and even Peugeot. While they have been taking some great results this year, 2022 will be the last year of the grandfathered LMP1 Alpine, as the regulations do not allow the car to race in 2023 and beyond. In 2023, it's looking likely that the French team will return to LMP2 just for the year of 2023. But in 2024, Alpine will return to the hypercar class with an LMDH entry. I'm hoping Alpine's two-car entry in 2024 will be able to fight for overall victories in the hypercar class that year and beyond. Although Alpine's 2022 hypercar entry is not a LMH or a LMDH, it has successfully been able to keep up with the hypercars and has been able to give us another interesting hypercar entry to discuss. I hope you found that video informative, and now I'd like to know your thoughts on Alpine's grandfathered LMP1 car. Let me know down in the comment section. If you want to see more updates and content on the hypercar and GTP class, I suggest subscribing to the left. And if you want to see another video right now, click one of the suggested videos to the right of your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.